this is Victor. I'm here with a new painting tutorial, and this time I'm going to explain how to paint the uh, Night Army Girl, the one with um, that has the the Reaper chain or chainsaw and the the Melta cannon, the thermal cannon. So I'm going to paint uh, it uh, similar to this guy here. Okay, so this is the standard I'm looking for. Okay, uh, the, so the metallics is quite a table top. Uh, painting, um, paying some attention on some freehand on the armor plates. Okay, so this is the the, the detail I go for. Okay, and I will uh, uh, I will paint the two weapons as well. So what we have here and what is the starting point? If you follow my channel, I explain how to waste coat silver. I did um, aerosol can, and so if you want to know how this was done, there is this is in a. A weekly painting and um, let me know if you don't find how I did that I will address you to that the same for the purple so I explain how to do masking in a, in, a, in a video and I explain how to apply the base coat so this is going to be uh, the starting point so base coat of purple on some armor plates of course this one not here because this was attached so I only did the silver so we are going to do this by brush and then base coating of silver so starting from this point the first thing we are going to do and also we have here the legs uh, this was attached maybe it should not be, have been attached before but what what i can do the only thing i will not explain is uh, the purity seals that i, I already painted uh, they were prepared to be attached to this guy later on so and the base is not going to be explained neither so for this one i will use quite a as common base okay and the guy will go something like that Maybe we have to be careful, or I need to check because I did this before putting uh, this guy will go something. I will need to find the, the right spot, but I think it's something like that. Okay, so let's start uh, with uh, the, doing the metallics. I will do first all the metallics before doing any armor plate, and to do that, we use quite a big brush. Okay, and we will apply noon oil all over the miniature. So uh, This is going to be a quite a straightforward. Um, I will use a bad brush to be fair to that. Not to that, and use quite a, a water brush. So, for example, I'm going to do this leg. Okay, so we are going to apply this on all the leg. Why I'm not doing the other base color? Because I will do a, a dry brush later on uh, with silver. So we need to apply this, avoid that the wash is pulling in areas and if you see that you have applied too much with the same brush, just spread it out. So okay, you see, uh, I go with a big brush to go faster. Uh, you have to be careful and to do zone by zone and try to finalize as I, I need to handle this. For example, I will do first one leg uh, and, and the waist and then I will do the other leg once the first layer of um, wash is dry. Okay, so try to find a way that you can um, handle that. So normally, because I, it's not attached to the base, we will need to do it in two, uh, uh, yeah, do one, one half, way that is drying, and then do the other half. Okay, so I do that. I do all the wash here, and I come back once this is done, so you can see all the different parts are looking the, uh, like once the wash is done. So once the wash has dry, okay, it will look like that. Uh, we are going to do a dry brush with iron breaker, okay. And I'm going to use a very big and soft brush. This is a, a makeup brush that it works perfectly to do this. So uh, I just take some paint. We use the same technique as usual, so I try to spread the paint inside of the brush as well. Okay, let's try to... And then we divide the brush. Okay. I test them. And we are going to divide brush the full miniature. So let's start from the top. Okay, and also this will help to clean up a little bit the washes. Up all the different details. 
I will just do one layer of the brush, I don't want to go too bright. Okay. But we are going to And where I see that there is some stains or something that I don't like from the from the wash, I just insist a little bit more on these areas to minimize that. Look, okay. Especially on these flat areas, the wash is not working that well. And now with the dry brush, we eliminate a little bit this watery effects. Okay. In the end, this is the we want to keep a little bit the dirty look, but this dry brush will help to pop up all the dead hands and will help to clean a little bit if the wash was not doing well with some areas. So we have brush this part and we are going to have brush all the other parts. So yeah, I will finalize this on the other parts and I will be back. So this is how the different parts are looking for after the dry brush. So you see we have now all the details pop up. Here we will need to do the blade but I will do this later on. Okay, and now we are going to start applying uh, the the Cooper Metallic, okay. And in that case, I'm going to use uh, the Balthazar Gold. So we are going to apply this on the part we want to have uh, a little bit of more uh, Cooperish looking, or something like that, okay. So I like to use this on this type of things we have here, okay, and. I will do on different um, on different parts that you like to have. For it's just to add some color variation to uh, escape from the monotone of the of all the parts. And I think this metallic gives an, an a very nice um, contrast with the silver and also with the rest of the color we are going to put on the on the night. Okay, so I will apply that. And again, we apply here, for example, on the. I will also do it in this thing here we have. Uh, and in several parts, uh, you can do the same part, you can have the other nine next to you. And, uh, so apply this always on the same part, on the same night, on, on the different nights. So be sure that. Or as I do, I like to do it a little bit random to give more personality to each night. Okay, I do some, some parts that normally I always do are this type of refrigerating systems that they look like uh, or power coils, I don't know really what are these things or what they are supposed to do, this looks more like power coils, it looks more like a refrigerating grill okay. I can do for example as well this one here to add some more variation like here as the grill is quite dark we try to avoid to go into the Okay, and I will do as well on the weapons. I will do on the this part of the weapon, on the muzzle of the weapon. I will do on the deposits of the weapon. I will do as well on the deposit of the reaper. So on the deposit on, on this tube, for example. I like to do some of these tubes with this cooperish color. I will do also this type of things that looks like the same refrigeration, refrigerating or engine system that we have on the like. So I will I will apply this and I will show you once it's applied. But here there is not too much to say. Just Balthazar gold applied on the parts that you like to have this um, more cooperish looking gold. They call it gold, but for me it's more of a copper or bronze color more than a gold. So I do that and I'm back once this is done. Okay, this is how it looks like now that we have applied the copper color everywhere. And we we are going to do the next step is apply it to the next color that is going to be warlock purple. Okay, this is an old color. It can be also used if you want um, a screamer pink. In the case warlock purple is a little bit lighter, and this is the color I'm going to use on all the parts that go with this pinkish uh, purple. So 
So we are going to play, for example, this one here, and I will do in that case half of the of this plate. Okay. So the trick here is as usual two thin coats. Okay. This one, this one armiger will have the top um, caparas also pink, so we are going to apply this on the full armor, leaving this thing to do it later. And I'm going to apply as well on this part here. So the one you paint big flat surfaces is key to have the paint very thin and to do at least a couple if not three layers uh, to minimize the brush strokes okay but it's very it's key that the layers are really thin and they are spread quite evenly okay so I'm going to play this and the other thing we are going to do, just let's stop here one for a moment. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to repaint all the pink areas and the reason is this pink is a little bit darker than the one we use with the uh, with the aerosol can. So we are going to the redo these parts as well. Okay here we don't we can go quite straightforward, you can see it's a little bit darker the new color so I'm going to do that I'm going to do all this and I'm back once all this is done so let's do this armor plate to the end okay so it will be back once all this purplish pink have been applied on the whole miniature so that's all for now and yeah, and I'm back once uh, I have done all the pink. Okay, next I'm going to do a wash. I will do Agvax Air Shade on all the the Cooper thing. Okay, so we take quite a big brush and we do a wash all over this. We have to be careful that. The, the inside of the grids are, are really shaded okay so we want this to have the, the, the dark part inside and this will give also will make them to be less bright and more integrated with the rest of the metallics okay so we do that uh, on all the metallic parts on all the cooperish parts I have to say so let's do these ones here But I will also do it on this part there. So I want to show you this is why I'm doing this part. And we let me put it aside. So always when you apply a white straight that is not touching anything later on. So we are going to apply this quite straightforward on top of this uh, on top of the caparas. Okay. This will give the shading we need for all and we can go try not to go on top on top of the metallics but we can we sit, we have to do the grid I'm not using that because I want the grids there really to look darker okay once it's dry it will look less brown but the agate air shade is a great color to give deep shades to to this Uh, to, to this color, to the, um, this type of pinkish color. It's a way to make it a darker. Be careful you don't leave brush strokes, it's quite easy. For example here, for example you want really to spread it well. I would try to avoid to go into the metal as much as I can. And we do 
it's also is important that these slots are well filled with the Aguax airship. The tricky part is going to be this, but you see now it's looking quite nice. Also, we have to be sure that we pinpoint the different rivets. We want uh, like an aureola of uh, uh, surrounding darker on these things. Okay, we do as well this part. Here, yeah, be careful not to go into the silver parts. You can dirt in this part here, it's not a problem. We are going to paint it later on a different color. As I said, I don't leave um, metallics on the frames of my. Uh, here, I make a mistake, I will correct it later on. Uh, <coughs> okay. This is quite. It's quite a straightforward step, right? One trip here, so as I have not attached, uh, and we need to do, we'll do the exhaust pipes here. And once this is done, I will let it dry, and then I will do on a second step the other parts. So in that way, I can, I can, I can leave this resting on the table, do one side, and then leave it resting upside down uh, while I'm doing the bottom parts of the miniature. I'm running out of Agus L shade. I have another pot. I would like to have a. Reserve pot of Ibex air shade. Cannot imagine going back to the period where I was painting uh, without Ibex air shade. Here on the chimneys or on the exhaust pipes, we want to put some uh, as well Ibex air shade on the metallics. This part will have to look a little bit darker. There is some smoke um, going out, so you want to keep it uh, darker. So we'll leave this to um, the vine. While this are drying, you will see that this is like a patch. Don't worry, this will disappear once it's fully dry. And here I will go a little bit on top of the metallic as well. So we are going to do the muzzle of this thermal gun, but I'm also painting on the silvery part or on the irony part. So we want to cover all we want to be sure that all the holes on the muzzle are completely covered. Okay. <coughs> And then the rest is more of the same. So I will I will keep applying this on this type of Cooperis color now and I'm back. What I will not do yet, no, I will also apply it here. So you will see this after applying. Okay, so I uh, I will uh, keep applying Agat Air Shade and I'll show you once this is done. Okay, next step we are going to apply the Flate One Flesh. Okay, this is the cream color I'm using for the white parts or the creamy parts of how you want uh, to call it. And if I don't need to find the here it is. And we're going to apply flake one place in all the parts where we want to be uh, white, as I say. So again, we apply thin coats using no a big brush and be careful because flake one place can I, I have it quite thin. So I prefer to apply uh, two or three coats, very transparent, but if you go thick with the flake one flake, it's leaving a lot of uh, brush um, marks, okay? So you, uh, as you can see, it's almost transparent in the first layer. Don't worry, let it dry, do a second layer. So let, I will let it dry here. Okay. And we'll do the half of the back as well. Okay, let it dry, and we are going to do as well the shoulder parts or the parts where we want to put on the armor plates where we want to put. This is going to have less white than the previous army gear that I paint, so I will, I will only put it on this shoulder part here at this moment. Okay, I will. Okay. And then it comes the part where I, we need to start clipping out this from the sprue because I will do also in that case the trimming of all these armor plates. Okay, so what I do to still have be able to handle and to make my life easier, um, okay, I clip two parts out, I clip from here, here. And here, and I leave it like that, so I have somewhere to handle, 
and I can paint the cream the, the white parts around. So I take a thinner brush to do that and we go carefully we do the water of the armor. Okay, we do all the rims of the armors. So I will do that on all the armor plates. And you will see that I will start clipping them out of the armor. But now I expect this part is already. And you see this part has dry. Now we can do a second layer. And you will see that the second layer is much better. We will need a third or even a fourth layer. It's better to go that way. It's going to you're going to have thinner layers and uh, much better nice results. And you can see when the layers are like that, they dry quite fast. I leave it next to the end, and I keep working on this part now. Okay, so I will do that and I show you once this color is applied. Okay. So the cream color is applied on all the rims. Okay, we have here some bars. Uh, all the rims where I want to put the cream color, of course. Okay, here we have, and as well, the half part of this thing. Okay, so next I'm going to apply the last color that I use in my patterns. And in, the, in that case, it's going to be, uh, it's the Nagarot Knight. So, uh, I'm... The freehand will come later, but first I want to apply all the base colors. So this is the color I'm going to use for this thing here. And as you can see, uh, Nagar Knight can be quite transparent, although it's dark color, can be quite transparent. So be, uh, take, um, yeah, don't rush, take it easy, and do two to three thin layers on all the parts. I know that I'm talking like Duncan, but it's the way to go. So here we have, I will apply that on all the different uh, parts where I want this dark purple. Okay? So Nagarot Knight, especially if you apply on the top of these metallics, but it's, you can have some, uh, yeah, it's not covering as, as, as much as you were thinking because it's a dark color. Okay? So I will do that, and then I'm back, I will be back for the next step. Okay, we have now the dark purple put everywhere we need it. And now I'm going to do another, uh, I'm going to play another color, this time it's going to be a gold. And we're going to put a retributor armor on the small schools we have in some of the parts of the miniature. So let's go. So for example, we're going to put it in this place here. Okay. Let me mix it a little bit better with this. is almost finished. So we are going to do this on all these small schools. We need to go back, for example, here with the white color to eliminate the pink. You don't want the case to see to leave pink visible. Okay, we need to cover the eyes. So we do the same for all the different schools, okay? So you do that on all the schools and I'm back. 
Okay, as you can see, I have put the gold on all the small skeleton um, schools. Sorry, as well this one here at the back. Okay, and yeah, I don't know if I miss anything, but uh, in, on the main ones on the shoulder pads and so on. So next, I'm going to start applying some more washes. And we are going to apply here a uh, um, seraphine sepia wash. Okay. We have to be careful how we apply this on on the on the cream parts. For example, on this one, I'm going to be quite careful to apply directly on the on the rivets. And we're gonna apply very little. We want here to make some shade. Okay. We're going to clean up this later on with uh, the same uh, color. We use as a base color. So we are going to do the same in all the different parts. So in these ones we are going to do more uh, a complete wash and then later on we are going to clean up because we have quite a nice detail. But I uh, will try to avoid to go on on the flat areas. So we will go mainly here. I will also do on the schools. We can also do the the schools there. So this will help. Okay. So we do something like that. Right? And again, here in this flat part, we try to go very soft. Just to give a little bit of thin, but not too much. Okay? You can do the recesses here. That's like that. There is another one done. And we are going to do all the different ones. So I show you as well one of these that are quite flat. These ones, I'm going to focus here. Apply it here and here. Okay, I will touch the different rivets. Change this brush is not working as I want. And then we are going to apply very soft here. That was a mistake there, so we are going to go like if we do mistakes, we correct it later on. So we are going to do all the different armor plates, all the rivets. Ah, the the sword, the sword, um, or the ripper. We are going to do it quite uh, generously. Okay. In that case, I will go over it, and I will just do something like that. And we are going to clean up this later on. This will give more dirty uh, look. But in, I want this on, on the on the side to be fair. Okay. 
So you see, we'll do the rest of the bone color and I'm back. Now that we have done the washes, the next step is we are going to do... Um, sorry, I haven't finished the wash. I have to do another wash. I was forgetting on the purple. Now I realize, sorry for this change, but yeah, we need to do a wash. And, and then on the purple, it's going to be quite straightforward. We do a black wash directly. We are going to use new oil. And we apply, it's quite a dark color, so it's not going to be visible at all so I mean it's going to be visible but it's not going to be too much As you can see it will and this was a little bit dirty yeah, sorry one moment clean your brushes correctly get some metallic sparkles now it's okay. So we are going to do a wash over the purple and in that case we can also do a wash, a second wash on top of the chimney or the exhaust pipe to give more a sensation of dirtiness. We are going to do the same on the weapons. We are going to do a second wash of black on the muzzles of the weapons. Uh, I don't do, I, I'm not doing the overheat metal in that case. You can do if you want, but in that case I'm, I'm not using that. I prefer to use more the, the like if it's some um, ashes or yeah, rest of the burning more that black dust than really overheat metal. Okay. Especially because I, I decided to go for a different color than the traditional metallic. So we are going to do here. I will not need, I should not forget this handle. Yeah. And then we do this thing. Okay. I also will do but I forget it before to do it. This can this black can also be used in some small parts of the pink. It's not going to give too many bones and on top and here it will give the sensation of dirtiness as well. So now we'll drop this somewhere. Okay. And we do the same on this shoulder pad. See, this is all, all the dark purple I have on this one. This, this one does not have too much dark purple. And what we can do while this is drying is start working on the highlights on other parts. So as we have done the the cream color on the other parts. Ah, sorry, was forgetting. So we are going to apply here on the muzzle. the second white that I'm applying here and the intention is to really give a dark look to these muzzles not to leave the metal bright prefer to give more a uh, dull dark look to this okay let's put it where it is not touching to do as well the small melt gun that goes on top. Uh, you don't need to magnetize these weapons. The ones that you have at the paint they go quite tight and they will you will be able to exchange the weapons without using magnets. At least is what I experienced with the prepared previous one. So let's go to clean up a little bit the bone colors or uh, not to a little bit to do the uh, full cleanup. So I'm going to start with a bigger brush 
And to do that, we are going to use the base color that was flight one flesh. Okay. And we are going to use as well white color that I think it. So I think quite a lot in my pot that way. So if you wonder why I use the paint that I leave from the pot is because I thin down the paints in the pot to make it them easier to use. So you can see first I apply flake one flesh. Okay, I'm starting from here, and then I go with white. I do a little bit of edge highlighting. Okay. Here we are going to see it was quite the biggest part of wash. So we're going to make it smaller, we do like that, and I'm going to do this border. Okay. I'm going to paint that like here. the rivets and again we do this type of castle thing or then more like cock things cock wheels Okay. We are going and then on here what we do is we start from there and we let the color fade out. And very thin as you can see it's quite thin by white, no? We do it like that. To do the rivets uh, I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to play this like that, sorry. So let's keep. So with a bigger brush, we do the rivets. The bigger I mean is the, the, the tip is less pointy. It's easier. See when it's doing like that, it's easier to only to touch the rivet and that's all. See that I make a little more mistake. You need to correct these ones. And this how you work. Green bone color. I go back with the okay, and then we're going to put like them back here. It's too brown. We go around. Put a little bit of white. We are going to do this on all the creamy parts, okay? Okay. There you 
have and now what we are going to do is with the flight one flash very carefully and the thing we can also do you see that some the the hole around the rivet is missing in some cases I use XV88 here for example this one here we can know it's missing the white okay but this one here that we make the small mistake we go with XV88 we just touch and it's clean up another thing that is important I will take no black as well when you're doing that and you want to be sure that we have a thin black line between the pink and the white color so this is why I go back and in some cases there is not the white have not do, done the job correctly we touch a little bit with black okay you need a very thin brush and as well thin vein okay so I will keep I will add a little bit more of white to increase a little bit more of the highlights so for example here Here, okay. We're gonna go with the here, like that. We can add like that, and then you go with the one color. See here the wash went down, okay, went to the side. So way to keep a good definition of this part is go with black and just do that. We'll do the same on this side. Okay. It's quite some work this part. Will take time. But I think it's worth it. Because this will be the base where we are going to put the decals later and I will place decals on this or freehand depending on what you want to do. But before doing any freehand or putting any decal, you need to really be have a nice monochrome armor plate or shoulder pad in that case okay so that's like that and now I'm going to do the rest of the armor plates and I will be back oh, that's it. okay next step we are going to work on the purple pinkish color and to do that I'm going to use again warlock purple And I will use uh, Ember Children as a highlight. Okay. We are going to clean up first the wash. So we are going to apply this first. So we apply this first on the caparas. You can see that it's quite transparent, so we are going to uh, have a, a quite darker color. We have to be careful with the with this uh, with warlock purple. The same will happen if you use. You can use if you were using instead of warlock purple, you can use uh, a screamer pink. You will have uh, quite a little bit the same 
effect, this type of brush. Um, okay, so you have to be patient and do a couple of layers if it's needed. Or go fast and do the brush. So eliminate the brush strokes. Okay. One layer will not eliminate completely. It's quite transparent color, as you can see. Okay, it's not making a big, huge difference. But uh, once you do a couple of layers, this will work. And then we use, we uh, use um, emperor children on the rivets. as well on the edges so okay it's like a little bit of edge highlighting but then we come with the purple This is not that important, this part here is going to be covered once we put the, the arm, but anyway I will soften this. Then as I have a so, uh, lighter mix, I will try to have a little bit more here. thinner brush so we use a thinner brush what I'm going to do with this one difficult because we have the rivets now we can go and here I will go next to the grid okay with the rivet
we can do as well here the transition to the door don't worry that the reading is not perfect now we come with the publish color Warlock purple. We have now all this. We need to do as well the highlight. Okay. Okay. So we, I will keep doing that and I'm back once we have done all this pink. So this is how it looks like now that we have done the highlights. So I hope you can appreciate the all the that now they have more volume. And here I start gluing some of the armor plates with the highlights on the legs. Okay. So we are now going to do now the next the deep purple. This one here, and what I'm doing, uh, what I try to do is to prepare everything for the freehand and the the kelts, as I said before. So, just let me take. Uh, we are going to take shadows purple first. Okay, I'm going to to show you here on this on this one. I think it's the best one to show how to do it. Okay, so we apply. We are going to do edge highlighting on this one, but we start with shadows purple. It's quite transparent and it's quite dark, so it will give a very base to do the next colors highlight. Okay, so we are going to highlight this part here in, in camera. Okay. We still have to do the face of this guy. Still a lot of work to go, but everything is getting quite a nice looking now. Here on the cameras, I have the idea to mix the curls and freehand, and then I think on the shoulder pads, I will mainly use freehand. Sorry, the curls. I'm doing this, this is not for a contest, it's more for tabletop. So I try to go to use techniques that are uh, looking nice, but at the same time are quite I want them to be quite efficient. So we have that. Now we are going to use the Gen Stiller purple. Okay. This will have a very strong contrast, you will see this very fast. So this will give very strong and quite a thick. So the, the way to do thin lines sometimes is don't worry if you do it too thick. Okay, and then you come back with the other color and you thin them down. It is quite thick and quite too much contrasting. Okay, I'm going to do this. I, I let it dry a little bit. That will help me to do the next step, so I will no apply this on the same places. There. Okay. So I don't know that I'm doing this with my own, the color of my army, but this can be applicable to the techniques and it can be used for any color that you want to use. Be careful with the metallic. The metallics don't work that well with H highlight. Okay. 
So we do that, and now I go back with Cheruk's purple, and we are going to go next to it. And we help to thin down the lines. Okay. You see that now they look much better. We also help to smooth the transition. And as I said, the rose purple is quite transparent and it works quite well on doing that. Okay, have here the purple. And finally, I'm going to use the color lilac. One, I will just do some very small accents and some strategic points. Okay, as we do this, the back part on the back part. I will first touch the rivets, you can touch them with the color you like. To make them really pop up. I really like, this is a taste of everybody, I really like to touch the rivets, I think they give more this industrial looking of the, of the miniatures. Okay, now I go quite thick with Shiro's purple here, okay, and we may even go on the back. Okay, we are going to do also this, like that there, and like that there, okay, and we are going to apply the same technique that we use in the other side, but in this case, I will focus on highlighting the back like that, okay. Then on the front, we need to be more careful. And sometimes on the, when I have this, it makes more sense just to make it like that. Okay. I will not go with the uh, Jen Stiller purple there. Okay, we can go with this. This part here can be more tricky. I go with Cheryl's purple. Another thing that I realize over time is that when you have a thin part like this, sometimes it's not worth to highlight. both sides. So just highlight where you think that you are going to be more impactful to give the volume. Okay, so something like that will work perfectly and then here I go now with 
Shadow Sparkle. Okay, I will I will just apply this on the top. Okay, so I will do the rest of the dark purple and I will show you the final result. So this is how it looks like now that I have done all the purple parts. Here we have also the shoulder pad. I did also this uh, purple parts on the Reaper chainsaw and also I add purple here. This guy, this guy will look much darker than the previous one. It will not assemble what you see. It is going to be much darker. The only part that will put facing to the front is this white here, but it's going to be much purplish uh, and then on the legs we are going to have more the riveting. So this is more or less the visual you can expect. No. Okay, so I will stop here uh, this tutorial. I will stop here part one and keep tuned if you want to see the second part on the painting tutorial of this guy. So I want to stop here and the second part we are going to start working on the caparas so I can glue this together and have uh, at least this part assembled. Okay, I like a lot this type of hound type of uh, face. So I will start. Uh, yeah, working on the face on the next part and working on the free hand on the caparas. Uh, and the legs for me, I will not do any additional work and it's have done the same that you have seen in this video. So that's all for now. Please keep tuned if you want to see how this evolves. And yeah, that's